building is built, actually two buildings, the South Building and the North Building. And they were built in 1891 and 1893. They were built to power the municipal railway. But when the city was looking at this facility, it was like, okay, it's way too expensive to upgrade this to serve as a repair yard, but we need an upgraded building for ACC. ACC is a first responder. We are there for Adams and critical to that function is having a building that can stand up and be able to exist off the grid for three days in the Out front we have an emergency generator. Power goes off to this building. That generator will turn on in under a minute and everything in this building will have power except the air conditioning. So we will be able to fully function as an emergency unit. If disaster happens in the city, we will be able to take in all the animals who somehow get separated from them and we will be able to house them. Every animal area is twice the size as it used to be. So we're not expecting to take in more animals, but we're expecting them all to be much more comfortable spaces. Doubling our play space as well. We have this courtyard down here, and then upstairs we have two areas for dogs and one area for smalls. So even the rabbits will be able to get out and play, and they don't have to share the yard with the dogs anymore, which I'm sure the rabbits will appreciate. Within the small community, instead of everybody being in one room, we now have three separate rooms. So we have a reptile room, a bird room, and we have the small room for the for the bunnies and the guinea pigs. We are actually one of the few shelters that is um, is vertical. Most shelters are, you know, most of California. It's you know, it's a big building on land, lots of land, and we don't we have we don't have land. And if we did, it would be prohibitively expensive. So it's taken a lot of design and a lot of thought on the part of the architects and everybody who worked on this project. Obviously the artificial turf, but we have um, a flush system underneath to get rid of all the, the bacteria, the urine, and the smells. And just being able to come upstairs and romp is going to be great for the dogs. It gives the behaviorists and the volunteers a lot of options on what they do. In our current shelter, we have one lobby. In this setup, we have three different lobbies. So we're able to separate our visitors by you know, reason for their visit. So I think this will be a good experience for your family who's not sure yet what they want and just you know experimenting, taking a look, uh, bringing the kids to see animals. And this space gives them the opportunity to do that comfortably, both down here in the main lobby and upstairs in the second floor lobby. Surrendering your pet or, or having your pet, having to have your pet euthanized is one of the most difficult times in your life. So there's a little side room there where people can get out of the main lobby and just take a minute to, to collect themselves and, and to, to process their thoughts. I'm going to brag a bit and say our live release rate for dogs and cats is 92%. So we're darn good as it is. But I think this will help us be even better. One, having all the glass, and the lights will be such that the dogs won't be able to see you, you'll be able to see them. But also, we have these four big community areas out front uh, that can either be used to hold multiple dogs, or frankly, some of our long-termers who are just not finding a good home, put them front and center and draw more attention to them. So we've added four community cat spaces to the new shelter. And the idea is that we will have bonded pairs or individual cats will happen to get along so that you know people can see the, the cats interacting, playing. Each room will have a, a cat play structure of some kind. And then they're not up yet, but on the wall will be a series of cat shelves so the cats can hop from one shelf to the other. And, and we think the community cat rooms are going to be really good for our adult cats. Our kittens fly out of here, but the older cats have a little tougher time. And we hope that this is going to showcase them and showcase also really how lively and interactive they are. And then we also have wildlife in their own separate room now. So we no longer have the situation where we have predator and prey together. The ventilation has been significantly, significantly upgraded. Health is, is critical and that usually comes from really good air exchange and really good cleaning. And uh, in this shelter, we'll have both. 
our veterinary suite has had a substantial, substantial upgrade. This is one of the new, well not new, but enhanced services we'll be providing is dental care. You see we have this new dental x-ray machine, all the other parts aren't here yet, but it'll allow our vets uh, to do dentals uh, for cats and dogs who need it, because that's really a huge barrier to adoption. Also, the expanded facility will allow us to do two operations at the same time. We have more recovery cages right in the room so that our vets can watch the animals as they're recovering from anesthesia. We are incredibly grateful to everyone who got us to this point in time. All the volunteers, all the donors, um, all the other parts of the city that really pulled together to make this dream a reality. Uh, it's been six years in the making and I think when you look around the space, you can say it's been really worth the effort for the animals of San Francisco. This is a much better situation for them.